Welcome back to Gamify This, the podcast game show featuring the artist, Samuel, the gamer, Sean, the nerd, Puzzle. Join us as we compete to come up with the best gamified solutions to our daily experiences on Gamify This. Welcome to episode 13 of Gamify This! Ooh! This is... This is the first episode after Halloween. Hopefully. Uh. Or at Which Halloween? Is why... What? Or at Halloween? On well, Halloween? Halloween isn't on a Thursday, and we upload on Thursdays. Oh, okay. But. Ooh. Ah. Anyway, that was a fun little thing we did. Uh, but you couldn't hear me very well, and for anyone listening without video, that was probably very confusing. I had a marshmallow helmet on, uh, blocking my voice. Samuel doesn't seem like he is ready to undo his costume yet. Sean just, like, undid his costume. Um, just my pig axe. nose is on upside down. Oh, no. Well, anyway, today's topic for today's episode what? is... <laughs> no! Oh, He's, well, I'm really have... excited, because I actually do, and I actually have a really fun plan. Um, Are you sure? But that's not how we do things here. Are you sure you're capable of fun and goodness? Oh, come on, Sean. You know I am. I'm always fun and good to everyone. I'm never mean to anyone. I'm never mad. I'm never... Evil actually, and never malicious. The thing about never being mad, evil, and malicious actually kind of works. What? What do you mean by that idea works? It It is consistent with the CIA's report on you. How do you have access to the CIA's report on me? Don't ask me questions, dister. Okay, Mr. Usher. Sean and I have bow ties on. You missed the bow tie memo puzzle? Tie have a bow those tie. two things into a bow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Captain. It's a Minecraft bow tie. Anyway, uh, welcome back to episode 13 of Gamify This. That was a fun little intro, but uh, we're all wearing bow ties now for some reason. This is I'm wearing Sean a shirt. and Samuel. This is Sean Hi. and Samuel. Say hello in that order. Hi. Hi. There we go. How have your guys' weeks been? Have you guys been gamifying things? It's been a little bit more than a week, but... Since the last recording, updates? Um, have you been applying these things to your life? Helping the mundane be not mundane, the monotonous be exciting, riding dolphins to work, exploding stop signs, all the normal stuff of gamifying your life? I, I, did, I did a partial system for myself where I have a schedule and I write down my task. Is, I did a very simple thing, but it's helping me where I write little stars under those tasks and when I complete them I fill out the stars and circle them and then I tally up the stars for the whole day and it's uh it, it, it's not perfect but it's helping me nice so you're still gamifying your school then. Uh, 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 yeah and Samuel is colored oddly because he has a little light bar in front of him that he chooses to make uh fun colors that make his skin look green instead of uh uh okay green apparently i just said green he turned very very green uh what what about you samuel how have you been how's your gamified approach been for work we have a new guy i've been training him i want him to know how to do everything i've done but i want his training to be better than the training i got now part of being a teacher is you need a student who is willing to learn yeah is he and yes He's kind of somewhat still seems sort of passive. So I'm trying to push a little bit more of the ask me what I need you to do. Ask me when you can learn something. I'm gamifying teaching. At this nice. Point, which is more of the kind of stuff I would enjoy doing. Yeah, that's good. That's great. What do you mean by you want to do more of that? Um... With my cartoons and stuff, I like to come up with visuals that help people either allegorically or illustrating concepts that are hard to understand and that sort of thing. I like it when the lights come on because I clarified something that is difficult to clarify. 
for instance, if somebody says, this one's a really hard one to get your head around, I listen for it, and the point where I understand it, I know how to make it easy to understand. Mm. Because that's the only way I can learn anything, is if there's an easy way. So it's not about, is there an easy way? It's about finding the easy way, if that makes Where sense. is that easy way? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So I've been using a lot of, what's all that oh. noise? It's Luna. I'll take the bone out of her crate. She's she's doing somersaults with her bone. It's like rolling thunder. Her crate's touching my desk, which is touching my microphone. Oh. So everything's like going up my microphone. Uh huh. <laughs> Have we run out of things to talk about? Oh, um, it's been easier to stay on my schedule at work. Uh, it's been really helpful having the new guy because. There's a day I have to count the stuff in the lab. And I'm like checking them off, getting them done. And I'm talking to him about he also plays um, that farming game app that I enjoy as well. Hey, and that's what I enjoyed about it is you can kind of set your quests for the day and try to get them all done. And you see all the moving pieces and stuff. And I told him it's a lot like that, the way that I look at work. And he said, that's a lot how mm -hmm. I look at life too. And I'm like, it's making it it's making a game out of it you were like have you ever heard of the podcast gamify this you didn't see the clip where i ate a bug well if you guys feel like you're done talking about your week and gamifying stuff the topic that i'm bringing up this week it might take a while because it's very different the whole episode is going to be very different so okay. it might take extra time so i'll just kind of speed through that small talk section for the beginning <laughs> Um, but this week, I would like us to gamify change. And the way that I want us to do this, have you guys ever heard of the improv game Change? Uh-uh. So the improv game Change, uh, just for background, uh, players perform a scene based on a suggestion or a topic, and at any point during the scene, the host can blow a whistle and say, Change! At which point, oh. the previous line of dialogue or action is replaced with a new line of dialogue or action. And I was thinking this could make it a little bit more interactive um, and also make it so that there isn't a long period of one person talking. I want our spin on this to be whenever I say change, we switch from Samuel to Sean and vice versa. Kind of like, so what oh. probably might happen is Sean take mental notes while Samuel's talking and think about ways things you don't like about his game that you'd like to change or maybe some things you want to add on to his game that you'd like to change and as we flip flop through it we're going to end up with a perfectly rounded definitely not ridiculous crazy game that is absolutely suited for both kinds of people you and him It'll be oh perfect. no luna <laughs> she's very much enjoying this new crate it's very big oh really yeah she can nice. she can stand up in it she can walk in a small circle <laughs> <laughs> um, for the audience, this week I finally got Luna a new crate because she's grown quite a bit from when I first got her first crate. Yeah. Um, she she wasn't able to sit up in her crate. She she would be hunched over like this, and her ears stick out the top. <laughs> but now she's happy. She can do somersaults and chase stuff around in circles. Oh. Oh my goodness! Now Sean's taking a break. Samuel just got back and now Sean's gone. Everything okay? Yeah. My axe fell over. Just like my soul when Michael started talking to me. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I is... didn't mean to ruin your life. This always <laughs> happens. That's I'm such a bad friend. You also have a way of making people feel good. So, change. I'm not going to give either of you very much prep time because I feel like no matter how much prep time we allot, the beginning is always very rough, so I think whoever feels most confident should just jump headfirst in. Your bow tie is so crooked, I just... Okay, it's it's because it's, not I'm not able to tighten bolts. it anymore. <laughs> oh, oh. There, I took it off. I'm not able to tighten it anymore, <laughs> so it was just bad. Thanks for showing uh, us your belly button. Sean was just proving to us that to take his bow tie off, he would have to take his shirt off. Take no, shirt I knew off. exactly what the point was. I, oh, I was explaining the to the audience that won't even see that because I'm gonna blur uh, it out. I don't want to be known as the person who did that. I hope you guys who are watching this are enjoying this. This is gonna be very great. 
We didn't do any warm ups. I feel like we should do warm ups. I'm gonna look up warm ups so we can no, do it in the future. Let's do this thing in the future. Whoever wants to just start ad libbing, monologuing, improving, a start to how to gamify change, come up with a scenario. And then as you're saying the scenario out loud, think, what would I like in this scenario? What would I like in this scenario? <laughs> <laughs> what would I like in this scenario? <laughs> <laughs> Think about the scenario and what you would like in that scenario and think of a gamified solution. So you're going from high school to college, right? And there's three main things that you have to do. Take into account your mental problems and your situational problems what's happening in around you and take into account the third problem that samuel is going to figure out oh, no, now he... oh, as okay. this i know i'm just leaving that so mental acuity has to do with how much time you're spending uh to make yourself comfortable in your head and uh, situational stuff has to do with Dormitories, social situations, <clears throat> and to do the situational stuff, you have to also prepare. You have to do maintenance. This is just sounding like a <laughs> sad situation a lot. Yes. I liked how you specified dormitory. Can we go with more specific things? <laughs> yes, dormitories, <laughs> cafeteria stuff, social situations. You can do preparatory things while you're still in high school, and then you can also do a maintenance awesome job quests, which give you maintenance points. And then the, pre the preparatory stuff gives you super awesome, cool preparatory points. And these combine and time add the sum plus two and then times three and then you get the total okay, score. Okay, Samuel, change the point system. <laughs> Ignore the squeaking. So what you're going for through change is first a little bit of consistency. Consistency with where you were in the past as a link to where you are in the present. Because you can't be thrown to something entirely new without a clear understand, without a little bit of a transition. And part of that transition is seeing how this new environment is like your previous environment. How the cafeteria is like the cafeteria at school. How the dorms are like your house where you stay. Yeah. And instead of yeah. instead of annoying parents, you have an annoying roommate. You use all that and you start to say to help you see how it's similar before you go to the transition of changing it. So the first points you're trying to get are similarity points. And when you can start recognizing your new classmates as people that you already know and start recognizing your dorm as your home and recognizing the cafe as the cafe in high school, anytime you go through a change, it's going to get a little bit easier because you say, it's all right. I'll just imagine I've been here for a while. And then you get points for having that strength attached to you. That's really, really good. I really like that. That's I feel like you've thought about that before. I was going to I was going to give you know. Sean some similar advice because I was starting to talk about when you're older and independent and then he essentially said he didn't want to do that or didn't want to Wait, think what? About that. Well, you kind of you kind of dodged it. You might have just had something you had to do. So, that was a good change, but now you need to introduce something new before I hand it back to Sean or else he'll just be changing what you just changed. So, we have the preparatory points that Sean was talking about. Those can be transformed to more um more similarity points, as I was saying, replacement points. Start recognizing the features that are familiar for the new things. The second form of points that you want to do is finding the new things. Look for what is the most different thing here and what can I learn about it? And you get points for going above and beyond, going ahead and preparing yourself ahead of time is preparatory times two. Do the research you can about what is this new thing that I'm facing? What's some research I can do so that I'm not just jumping into this and just doing what the professors tell me and trying to act like I understand it? How can I get ahead a little bit and be the expert in the room on this new thing so that it'd be like, they'd come to me and say, you seem to know where you are. You seem to know what you're doing. And you'll be able to help your classmates. 
instead of worrying about needing somebody to help you as much. Okay. Sean? Yeah? Change that to make it more understandable, because I tuned out, which is bad. We're trying to gamify this, not make it a system. Oh, that is a problem with you. So... (laughs) I do tune out, and I am the target audience. The way you get double the points is assessing your situation. Imagine you're a stick figure, and you're looking around in an environment for things you can pick up in a survival game. What can... What can benefit you and other people and make this a healthier environment for you and other people? Assessment points are an overarching system that applies to uh, the preparatory points, the mental points, and the uh, similarity points, and all that, where you, where after you've done those things, you assess it, and it's like, this is this is good because of this, and you kind of remind yourself of that. Give yourself a mental sticky note, and then be doing that with all of the other things that you encounter. So the way you get double points on anything is assessment points, taking a little extra time, maybe even just ten seconds one day, looking at that uh, lab microscope or the Mac and Tootaloodle, and being like, "This is cool, and I think it would benefit me or somebody else if I did." this with that or if i approached it this way elaborate please elaborate on which part you don't want to look at a random piece of scientific equipment and start messing with it what do you mean by look at it and say i'm gonna do this with it okay uh so (laughs) (laughs) uh no no not no (laughs) Develop a mindset about it. Uh, You can make a miniature game when you're using it to help you get the most benefit out of what you're observing. Uh, Or teach it to somebody. Or use it in a way that people don't expect, not in a bad way. (laughs) Um, Hang on, what I mean is use it to observe other things. Um like other kinds of bacteria and stuff like that. And that way you learn more about that other bacteria, but take an educational, uh, open mind to it and you will see things that benefit you in the future. Mostly okay. mindset is the good thing in there. In that particular case, you can tell neither Sean nor I have ever been to a college. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. That was the end of round one. Samuel, I want you to give a summary of this. Okay. The real thing about change is you are getting preparation for going to college and you want an overarching system, a bird's eye view, if you will, um, so that you can get assessment points to understand like you're watching yourself on a bigger map and you kind of see where you are, the areas that are dark, you can see where you're going, you can see where you've been, the areas that are light, and you're trying to go to those dark areas, the areas that haven't been illuminated yet. By learning, oh, right. by learning, like on a like a on, map a, or, on a game, yeah, like on a map on a game. You see your stick figure character. You see what you got to do to win the game, the college game, the new stuff, the changes. You have a mindset so that you can get assessment points. That's um, seeing and understanding what you need to do. You actually get points for how many times you open the map and make good notes. But you also get observations with benefits um in addition to the benefit of assessment of understanding it it's when you're actually in the game and you start to open up the blank book your lab book or whatever um for doing chemistry and seeing the microcosm (laughs) microcosm on the pleated paper um and moving it to a squidgy widgy um, Samuel, keep, 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 keep the pattern. broad picture. Um, and doing doing a little observation in the element, like in the lab, in the class, or in the math room, or in the whatever <laughs> bathroom. Uh, getting the observation with benefits, you are looking to learn. You have some time to examine it before the actual teaching happens so that you can make some guesses at what it might be. Look at things in the room to give yourself clues as to what it might be, what 
the professor might say, and then see how close your guesses are to what what the professor says and and what you come up with. Good. Nice. Yeah. So th- this is really cool because this is I that was a little voice crack. I don't know if you guys heard that. <laughs> this is a lot like how my schooling is at Culverton. At the beginning of the week, we have these resources at the top before we get into the project and the resources seem very broad and generic. It's like here's these topics and just read about yeah. them and I'm like when I'm going through it, I'm obviously not able to put all that knowledge in my brain all those yeah. new concepts because I haven't used them yet. So what I like doing is thinking thinking about the name of the project that we're going to be doing that week and thinking about how these new topics might fit in and doing that before getting into the project makes the problem solving easier cuz I'll I'll have a task in the project that's like um do this with this concept and I'll be like I I've never done this before and then I'll remember oh when I was reading this resource I was thinking about how to apply this stuff already. And that's a lot like what you were saying, Samuel. My butt hurts. Uh, well, you're always a easily butt hurt person, if you know what I mean. Hey. <laughs> yeah. Puzzle just okay. says some things sideways to me, and Sean's like, I think you hurt Samuel's feelings. Which I appreciate, because <laughs> okay. I'm right here to tell you that. <laughs> Samuel and Sean, we're starting over. Round two what? will be... No, 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 it's okay. Round okay. two will be implementing this change. However, uh, this will be very improv. Samuel, you are a learned professor. You are familiar with the gamified ways. Sean, you are a new student and you are not liking this change. You are not uh, having a good time at, uh, at, at this school. And um, Samuel, you are telling him... I don't know why I'm still talking. You guys should get started. Okay, here, here's a scenario. Uh, it's after school. School just ended. Sean, you're approaching his desk. You're like, I don't know if this is going to work out. I think I might need to drop out. Samuel, you're the professor. You're going to help him out. And go. That's okay. What is it that you're wanting to do instead of this class? I'd have a few question points that I can pull out based on his concern or what he has said to me. Um, but there to illuminate for me what it is about the class setting that doesn't match up to his expectations. Because we can get a lot of money off of him if he chooses to stick around. Samuel Professor, I don't know what's going on with my life, but I feel upset. And I feel like part of it is this class, and I don't know if there are ways that I can improve it or if there are ways that or if I just need to drop it and move on to something else. So what is it that you would like to be doing instead of this class? And what are some what are some things that concern you that you've brought up here that we can make better? How is this class not satisfying you? Well, I feel like my learning process is not very good right now. I feel like when <laughs> my brain isn't good. <laughs> <laughs> do, uh, do you see my notes though? I'm, I'm, I just said no brain. <laughs> does not, com- does not compute. Keep going. I feel like my learning process is not very good right now, and I feel like I don't understand things you say when you say them. Change. Uh, I'm not clear on what you're saying all the time. The concepts don't always get to me in class, and it makes me frustrated. So your pro the mental process for you and the way that I communicate to you or that this school communicates to you doesn't really connect to your way of learning is or the way that I understand what I think you're saying it might be in my mind <laughs> that's that's okay um you could you think you maybe could understand it if we phrase things differently or if we define if we define our terms and used words that were more familiar with you and used concepts that were more familiar to you. What were you doing before you came here? And what I don't know what what do you Change. do what do you do what um school were you going to before and what were you good at? I, I have here that you passed all of your classes really well and that you took the PSA. Change. Um do you like video games? Yes. <laughs> All right. Um, what are some of your favorite video games? Um, War Thunder. Change. And... 
<laughs> ah! Gamify this. Minecraft? <laughs> I'm just taking the basics or the funnest. What do you do? What What's the mindless stuff that you like to do? Even when I'm doing mindless stuff, I like to do project-oriented... Uh, not project-oriented, but productivity-oriented thinking and objectives. Please give me an example. E so, even when I'm doing something mindless, I would like to be doing something productive along the side. Biking is kind of mindless, but it also gives you exercise. Stardew Valley, a nice video game, can be mindless, but it is also oriented towards uh, profit and social good and all of that stuff. Okay. So you wish that in the classroom you could be doing something a little bit more like bicycling rather than sitting at a desk and listening. And you wish that um, you could actually be doing something else educational while you're being taught. Or if there's a better way I can passively absorb the information. Have you considered something you can squeeze? I have tried that with Michael's face, but it doesn't change. Work so well. <laughs> Michael's I face have is not tried that with Michael's arm. Michael's all across the change. ocean. <laughs> <laughs> I have done that with squeeze balls, but wait. Right. We're not, we're not allowed to play. We do not encourage playing with your balls in class. We also don't encourage grabbing. Change. <laughs> we do not. Wait, the change would be, we do encourage. <laughs> we, do, we do not encourage um, physically touching co-students uh, while the professor is looking. That really makes sense. I should get that checked out. Uh, you can grab a student's arm, but then we would have to expel you. You could find some toys. You could go to your local dollar store. Change. Explain Stardew Valley to me. Stardew Valley is a game where you are oriented towards your future and uh, living your life money-wise and socially. And like it's a, a farming... Farm? It's a farming game. Oh, yes. cool. And... You can hop on and off when you want, and it can be mindless. You can do mindless things. But it also can be strategy and stuff. What are some right? mindless yeah. things that you can do? You can go fishing in Stardew Valley. Is that what you're asking about in the game? Yes. You can go fishing. You can plant and water your crops. You can go talk to people, and you can go and water your chickens wait you can you can uh, milk your chick do you keep a notebook with you when you are in these classroom settings i try you do know to take notes you don't necessarily have to write down what i'm saying but you can write down a thought that comes to your head that's completely i don't have to use unrelated. words you don't have to use words you can use pictures or if you use words they don't have to be the words that i'm saying Use the paper as that other thing. That reminds me of what I used to do. That's similar to the mindset that I have, but I hadn't applied it in that way. Thank you, Samuel, okay. so, Professor. <laughs> visual mindset. Please. We don't have um, very visual books in our library. I acknowledge that um, we don't really have a distributor who will bring us any, but I can give you a list of recommendations on books that aren't required of this school, but they cover some of the same topics, you will still need to read the books. We recommend at least a few of them, but I'll mm -hmm. also recommend these ones to you supplementarily. And there's also uh, videos. They're really quick. You could watch them a few times and they'll get you basically the words that are in bold throughout the textbook. I recommend to all of my students, the visual ones, the more uh, mathematically minded ones, really any of my students, but they start by making note of all the bold terms in the module they're on, and then either go to the glossary or go to a dictionary or Wikipedia or something and learn what they can about those words before we actually go into the module. And one thing I can also do for improving in-class time is writing down concepts and circling them and draw someone interacting with them in a certain way or something like that. Just putting those word pictures into place so that when I look at them in my mind, it makes more sense. I'm the principal. I just walked in. 
So, Sean, how are you feeling about things now? Oh, oh, Change. <laughs> Change. <laughs> Hi, Daddy. I feel, I feel a little bit more hopeful about things. <laughs> That's, good. Little... That's good. Change. Woof, woof. <laughs> Change. Change. <laughs> That's what happen, happens in improv. I Same know. Is. I feel a little bit more hopeful about the future, but I still think there's going to be obstacles. But there are always think... obstacles. Even when a student has trouble learning, we can't change the whole system for them, but we can help incorporate things that can aid them. Uh, Professor Samuel, how are you feeling about your student, Sean? I think I hate him. I think we can give him some time. Um, we're fine. We're we're gonna need to work on communication. I think is especially the main thing. Understanding what he needs, and he'll need to find some recreational stuff to do at the school. He needs to make some friends. Yeah, he does. He doesn't have any friends. And, but I, very but I wouldn't Sean. encourage him, especially to spend time in the library or in the classroom settings. I think he'll do really well researching on his own. Yeah, I was going to say, what would you recommend he do for classes where his professor might not be as understanding as you are, where he still needs these solutions, but his professor won't help supply him with them? Uh, he should always bring something with him, whether a notebook or a fidget toy or both. Oftentimes, professors don't allow fidget things in class or snacking. I can doodle. In my classroom, he'll always be, I will always allow it for him because he's addressed those things to me. Um, for the ones where he can't, though, I will make a note to the other professors that he can bring a notebook and that we encourage him to take notes and sit at the front of the class. Okay, very good. I will say that we are calling it a scene there because that's what you do at the end of the change game. I feel like there would be no professor who would do that. <laughs> I got few, hundreds but, of students. Yeah. I mean, they don't reach out to the hundreds of students and ask them how to accommodate them. That's just not how it works. The no, students yeah. have to come to they them. They have to come to them. And if they take the time to come to the professor, they can do that. <laughs> um, okay. New scenario. <laughs> We're going to do another one of these games, but I want there to be more conversation back and forth so I can call it change quicker because that's a can little I more fun. Can I go get water? Yeah, go get water. We have a new scenario. This time, Sean will be the one teaching Samuel to gamify. <laughs> the student has become the master. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. In this scenario, Sean, you are about to move away, several states away, for work or for school or something. Samuel, you are his best friend in this scenario. He just brought this up to you. This is news to you. He's leaving in three weeks. This is a big change for you. And um, you need some help. Are you trying a to prepare me to for it. something? No, I did a really jerk okay. move by saying, "Hey, I'm moving in three weeks." Uh, well, it, you got a really, really good opportunity for and you have amazing... to show up for your first day soon. You have to, but you can come back. You, you can visit every month in mm -hmm. person, um, but you need to find good ways to stay in touch, have a good relationship, and stuff like that. So, Sean. I'm going to fail you this one. You are moving in three weeks. Samuel, you are very sad. You are helping him move right now. You're loading up some boxes in his U-Haul truck. and you're, you're I haven't really addressed our feelings yet. Yeah, you're, you're bringing it up to him how you feel. You've just been kind of bottling it up. But before we go into that, I'd like to do a pop quiz. It's time for a pop quiz. You on Spotify, roll up your sleeves and scroll down below the video on Spotify only to the quiz section. What you see there, it says, how many times does the average American move in their lifetime? Oh, what is this? There's multiple choice box. Which one is it? Is it five times, 11 times? Four times or 20 times? 5, 11, 4, 20. Those are your options. That's that's a lot. The time Dude, is I up. Hate, I hate what? moving. I hate the you idea hate of moving. moving. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Samuel, what is your well, answer? 11. Sean, what is your answer? Four. That was your answer? The correct answer is 11 or 11.7 times. 
According to the United States Census Bureau, the average person in America will move as many as 11.7 times in their life. Here are some interesting main motivators. 48% of moves relate to directly to just the housing situation, and 30% are family related. That's interesting. I find that interesting. It's interesting that you thought it was four, Sean. But the correct answer is 11, or specifically 11.7. Good job, Samuel. Dude, isn't that interesting? Um, no extra points were awarded to you for that. That was just for the fun of it. And I hope you at home voted for the right answer. If you didn't, I guess you just don't move enough. Sean. And uh, in the QA box, just below the poll, <laughs> in the QA box, uh, submit an answer to the question that is listed there, which is, what was the most interesting slash emotional moving story that you have? Make it as captivating, entertaining as you want, because it's fun to read these whenever we do. Uh, so yeah, submit your most entertaining or emotional moving story in that box. I'll put mine in there. <laughs> okay. Put in the QA box the most entertaining or emotional story you have related to moving, whether it's you moving or a friend of yours moving. But don't make it too sad because we will read it. Samuel will put his in. He's distraught. <laughs> John won't put his in. It's too complicated. And I might put one in. I've moved a few times. And we're about to move again. So we'll see about that. Anyway, let's get back to the podcast. So, uh, you excited about this move? Yes and no. Change. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but I am going to miss the way things were. Yeah, why are you going? <laughs> There's so much dead air right now. I feel like I was more prepared for this part. I think we were both more prepared for my part. Uh -huh. You're really excited about this, maybe. They have a nice neighborhood like this one there, maybe better. Well, I love this place. But I feel like this opportunity I got to be a drug dealer is just going to be so healthy for me. Change! Change. <laughs> is, What's is, in these is boxes? Help. <laughs> yes. This movie just completely changed. It's, it's going to help me grow my intelligence. And I can't entirely explain it, but I also kind of feel God's pull to go there. It's like the purpose for me. My life, I feel like I could do some work there, and I've argued with him about it, believe me. <laughs> Change. Well, I was... I can't explain it, but I feel something in my core that's calling me there, and it's not without grief that I do it. Well, um, you say it's not without grief that you do it? You guys need to finish with this setting and get onto the gamifying pretty soon. Um... Yeah. Um, I think that Your this dick. move is a very bad idea. I think um, I'm happy for you that you're going. Um, I personally wish you told me. I personally wish you knew like a year before or that like you could postpone when you go. So me we too. could have a little more time to do the stuff we were going to do that we never ended up doing. Like 50 more episodes of Gamify This in person. And uh go to the art crawl together more like we thought we were going to do. I kind of I feel like I'm going to need somebody to do what you did. And I feel like I can't be the person that I was trying to be for you while you were here. <laughs> this is how this is how I feel like it would go if you left puzzle. I feel like this is how the conversation would go if you left. You're going to have what you need up there. You're following your dream. I feel like my dream's been cut in half. I get where you're coming from. Because I've experienced stuff like that before. And I can't tell you not to grieve, but I can tell you it is okay to. And it's okay to feel uh, distraught for a while. When you're ready to come out of that and start building again, you can try and view life <laughs> as a game. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I feel like I lost. I mean, I feel like I feel like someone else won the game, and they're collecting the prize, and I'm here picking up the pieces. I don't think Sean is ready for this. <laughs> Nobody's ready for this. Was this a bad idea? When you're ready to come out of the rut that you've been stuck in for your entire life, 
You're making uh, this his. You're making this his fault or his problem or something. You're the one who's leaving. <laughs> you're I'm, leaving. Me yeah, the I rat. know. Are, is it because of the rat? Is that why I, leaving? You realized I was never no, gonna. Get, I was never gonna uh, change. I was. I was trying to make that a joke. Was and I too it depressed for you? Was I just too no. depressed? Did I bring you down? <laughs> I don't know what to do. Everything is falling apart right now. I don't know what to do. I don't know what's going to happen when you're gone. I, I don't have any friends. And I don't have any support. Shh. And I don't have... Scene. A man <laughs> I'm calling the scene right there. Um, we I learned didn't a like lot that there. one. We learned a lot. <laughs> uh, we learned a I lot learned about Samuel. A, I learned I need to have a conversation with Samuel about how he's feeling. <laughs> and I learned that Sean's not ready to take on the, uh, he's not, well, the, con he's not the concept ready at all. Of, the concept of people moving and not having friends is, is a very <laughs> difficult one topic. for both of us. Yeah, yeah. and uh, it doesn't seem like, <laughs> it seems like the only advice he gave is, when you start feeling better, <laughs> no, you're supposed to help him feel better, not say, okay, when you get better, come back. And <laughs> when you I'll get give better, you then make a game out of it. <laughs> <laughs> make the game about. Okay. Um. Well, here's the next. Here's the next scenario. It's less serious. That Samuel, your doctor sad. just told you you have to drastically change your diet, and you're oh, gonna I have to he stop eating. You had terminal cancer. <laughs> yeah, this is less serious. Samuel, you're dying in three days. No. Okay, Samuel, you just found out that your top ten favorite foods you can no longer eat. Top ten? Oh, no. Basically, almost everything you like to eat, you can't eat anymore. But this is going to be good for you. Your doctor said that you'll start feeling amazing. You're going to have energy. It's going to be great, but it's going to be more expensive, and you're not going to like the, the transitional period. Sean, you're going to help him with this. Yeah. Um, Are you my doctor wait, no, or my mentor? Sorry, sorry. Other other way around. Sorry. We we had it. Sean was the master. I'm... Now we're switching it. Sam was the master. Sean, you're having to take out all the foods. Oh, I'm having that you an like. aneurysm. Okay. So I'm Coach Samuel now. Or you're I... Coach Samuel. Sean, you're having a crazy diet, turning your life around. It's going to make you feel great. It's going to improve your mental capacity. It's going to improve your emotions. You're going to have more energy to work out. Everything's going to be great. You're going to start beefing up and being the testosterone man you want to be. But Sean's a little upset that he's going to have to cut down on the foods that he likes and the snacks that he likes. Well, that's okay. Yeah. Let's go. Change. I don't have an income. Change. What? Uh, I don't have money. I remember you used to buy your food at um, Target. Walgreens. Yeah. Walgreens. <laughs> you just buy pills. <laughs> you just eat pills all day long. <laughs> pills and candy. They do have a food section at Walgreens. It's just not very good, and it's yeah, very I was say expensive. Pills, candy, and I'm like, I was food. going for expensive, but then he went really expensive. I'm like, that's why you don't have an income. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Sean. Well, remember, this is a scenario. This isn't you. I don't. Ha I don't eat at Walgreens. Okay. I got a lot of Aldi pizza, and that was a really good experience for me. I like cheese. I'm not going to be able to have cheese. Milk is addictive, and I'm not going to be able to have milk. Uh, I'm not going to be able to have sugar. I'm going to be stuck in the rut of veganism forever, and I don't know how Change. to live. What, I'm, um, I'm going to be... Don't interrupt. I, Sean's changing. <laughs> changing his bow tie. That's the second time you've taken your shirt off this episode! <laughs> I'm gonna end up being a vegan when I don't want to be. Because I really like meat, and I really like eggs and cheese and stuff like that. I'm completely supportive of people who want to do that, but I don't want to do that. And I feel like my enjoyment of life is gonna go down. So how do I get past that back onto track? Well, I was just like you when I was your age possibly worse change well when i was 18 i had a um terminal belly ache and <laughs> i went to my doctor and he told me it's really a matter of whether you want to live without what you like or if you want to live and uh you have a few more days to live and i was gonna be like <laughs> well if i give it a little bit more time Maybe I can find a way around this. And I did. 
I actually got to start eating the foods I liked again mm -hmm. after about a year. But the thing is, I didn't even like them anymore after a year. Now, I don't know how that makes you feel right now, but for me, I was able to find so many foods I didn't even know existed because I always passed mm -hmm. them in the grocery aisle. I was always looking for very specific things like the macaroni and cheese, specific brand even, okay? Um, I loved the dairy, I loved the bakery section. If anybody knew the difference between a donut and a Danish, it was me. I, uh, I was spending a lot less time in the bakery except for when I was looking for the kinds of breads that I didn't know before existed. Um, the whole grain bread. So, I sh should I experiment? Can I experiment with you? <laughs> I'm, no. I, I want to help you in the experiment. I'm going to go to the store with you, and I'm going to help you. I'm going to give you a list of Can things. Can you push my grocery cart? No. Sorry. Um, <laughs> I'm going to mention some certain brands that actually are focused on this diet a bit more. Um, they're focused on other disabilities as well, but they will they will be very easy categories to get started in, and you're gonna start noticing them right away. Um, as you go to grocery stores, you're gonna see the logos, you're gonna see the color, you're gonna see between what you were looking at before. I don't know. It might be like the yellow card game. You might start getting excited and when you see it and be like, pinch pinch me and say, hey, I saw it before you did. Hey, get it off the yeah. shelf and put it in the cart. My camera died. Change. Oh, it did. Uh, it will change that yellow car pinch thing. You're going to see the bacon and you <sighs> say, oh, no, wait, that one has meat in it. And then you're going to go a little way more and say, oh, there we go. The cauliflower bacon. I say, we're not looking for the cauliflower bacon. Oh, yeah. The vegan bacon. And then you're going to grab the vegan bacon that doesn't have cauliflower in it. So are there going to be things that I can do that are similar to the things that I did to help me transition? You can't have cheese anymore, I hear. Uh -huh. So we're going yeah. to go over a list of other things people have inside cheese. And for today, we're going to pick one of them. I'm going to let you pick. And we're going to give it a try in one of your favorite foods. Um, huh. I don't know if it was macaroni and cheese or if it was like cheesecake or something like that um what do you nachos. what do you usually you usually have nachos today so we're gonna have some fun and figure out what to put on the chips instead of the cheese yeah that sounds like a good idea it's gonna be different but different's not always bad yeah. <laughs> okay. i was kind of cheating there <laughs> you might hate it but we'll see how this experience is overall, and we can try something. And if you hate it, we can, we can I'll, try pay for the, I'll pay for the one that we get next instead uh, for this trial run. You are a very monetarily invested dietitian. Change. <laughs> you, are, you are really caring. Change. I like you. Change. Who are you? <laughs> Hi, I just came <laughs> from another planet. <laughs> So I'm getting ready to make a calendar. Um, it's just going to be for me, but I'm going to try to keep a record of the foods that you generally eat. We're going to think about breakfast, lunch, and dinner. What you snack, we'll, we'll work on snacks over time, but we're going to plan your meals Change. out. Change. Snacks are actually very important in a diet. Yes, they are very important, but we're focusing on the meals right now. Okay. Well, what if I said change? All right. So we're going to go over a list of the snacks you're going to eat. Um, how many classes do you have tomorrow? Two. Oh yeah, I forgot your professor wants you to be doing more recreational and, um, stuff. Yeah. <laughs> well, cool. Oh um, my gosh, I have a horrible life right now. Well, while you're at the gym, <laughs> while you're at the gym. You have new professors, you're moving away in three weeks, and you have a new diet. While you're at the gym, we're gonna focus on more, uh, we're gonna focus on more salty snacks and snacks with high in electrolytes, uh, drinks high in electrolytes, uh -huh. okay? Um, there are very friendly to your diet snacks at the grocery store. Like protein powders? You'll actually know where to find them real easily after just a little bit. We're going to... Are gonna Genesis Health Shakes healthy for health? We're not going to be getting our snacks from your gym. You don't uh -huh. go to, a, to that gym. You go to the gym 
on campus. I go to the gym in New York City. <laughs> the New York City gym? Change. <laughs> I, go I go to, to the gym in Sonsinata. <laughs> Is <it to> nada? <laughs> <laughs> we not speak an alien language. <laughs> <laughs> Sean, your microphone cut out. You went, Ring! and it like echoed. It was like, and it was like, oh my goodness. Okay, uh, get back to the get back to the talking. Make sure you gargle twice every time you drink your electrolytes. And um, yeah, change. Well, there have some very salty snacks that you are allowed to eat. We can still eat. I do uh, like salt peanuts. Right? Uh, I have. Uh, to. That's a sore spot. Would you choose? You wouldn't choose peanuts, okay? Would you no. do? Well, um, he already has to eat them every day to keep his allergy at bay. We can make. We Could can you make add more. Unique. We'll add a little bit more salt to them. You can keep a few salt packets in your backpack, and we'll sprinkle mm -hmm. a little bit on the peanuts. I know they're already a bit salty, um, but that's not going to be your your choice snack. Um, <gasps> oh! But we have. I do like. Ranch dressing. Do you like dried uh, dried chickpeas? I think I do. You like sunflower seeds? I do. And pistachios are really good in all forms. Change. I have a problem with the pistachio company. They've actually been um, infiltrated by an alien organization that is very questionable. <laughs> I like pistachios. No, no, no. The factory has been. They are manufacturing them pistachios, and I do not like them. spider people. Must go. All right, you can't have cow's milk anymore. You can't have goat's milk anymore. We're going to try... You don't have to have oat milk, and you don't have to have almond milk. Uh, but we're going to try samples of a few different ones. The one that tastes good to you today, or the most like what you are used to, will you choose it, and we're going to try that for a week, okay? Change. Okay. And then I could make a homemade salad dressing. With that stuff, with the yogurt really we were just like talking about. Dressing. We were talking about. I yogurt. said she said change, so now we're talking about yogurt. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay. okay. This yogurt that I'm suggesting is completely dairy free. Uh, change. Ooh, this uh, this bran flakes I'm recommending are completely gluten free. Uh, they uh, they're off brand bran flakes. But they're that's okay. I'm poor anyway. Well, they're a lot Change. more expensive. So I don't do... have money anyway. <laughs> <laughs> You're buying all this food for him, so. Oh yeah. Well, he it, it, it's billed along with the some of it treatment. If he doesn't like it, I'm gonna buy the first next replacement. That's just part of the re that's part of the trial of the beginning. We're not gonna do that every time. All right. Um, can you come up with a helpful Visual aid for the milk. So each, <laughs> so I use each it for the milk. <laughs> I used it for my milk. So all of the foods that I can't eat now, I'll make, I'll make a little picture, and they're each unique planets, and each substitute is one of the moons, so that uh, mm. I can't, I can't exactly go to the planet anymore, but I can. I can ah. follow the moons and figure out. I can discover new moons and be like. For uh, every one, there's going to be like five other options. Those will yeah. Be moons. Okay. Or exactly. Them. Sean, you got a lot of points for that. That's amazing. Thanks. I haven't gotten any I, points this whole game so far, apparently. <laughs> yeah, you have. Oh. We're going to avoid the pistachios for my. I mean, I would avoid the pistachios for my own personal reasons. What do you usually have uh, Tuesday nights? At your book study. I usually have really cheap chicken finger nuggets with uh, horseradish sauce and ketchup. All right. We're going to look at options for what we can have instead of the... You can still have the horseradish sauce. You can still have the ketchup. It's like you're going to be fine there. Um, but... But not the chicken nuggets. <laughs> We're going to go... Um, I will not recommend these for this store. Their substitute options are five times more expensive. But there's another oh, store... It's, it's sprouts. It's not a very well-known store. Actually, you probably 
You might have heard of oh, it. Oh yeah, I, I visited Spruits one time. But... It's uh, it's near, <laughs> it's near where I live though, so um, you can pick it up. I I can actually pick it up on my way in tomorrow if you want to try it. Oh Change. yeah, I can pick you up tomorrow and we'll go try them in the store. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've gotta eat it. So they have free samples tomorrow, and uh. And they're sending them out to five different neighborhoods. Yours might be one of them. Whoa. <laughs> That's like $10 million. I haven't quite sample. understood every time you've said change. I think you're just doing it for fun. <laughs> well, I haven't done it enough is the thing, so I'm trying okay. to... <clears throat> <laughs> well, Sean's <laughs> head is on backwards now. <laughs> We've been through a huh? few too many multiverses. <laughs> oh, yeah. So hang on, well, okay. Let's reel I think back. The, Sean, I think how are you import- feeling about the food thing? Yeah, yeah, the important... What do you mean continue. How- okay, yeah, the yeah, important yeah. thing, I think, <laughs> is to go uh, visit the space around the planets and see which moons I like. And then maybe we can find some regulars in those moons, but, uh, but I think the important somebody. thing right now is to go explore and see what options there are. You might and maybe start with something familiar. You might like the different. I'm, we're gonna we're gonna try to find stuff that's similar. Yeah. But if you are like, okay, this doesn't taste like the milk I tried before, but the one that did was a little too much like it and kind of weird. I want to try uh-huh. this other flavor, this other thing a bit <laughs> because I I've never had it before. Um, and you might do that instead. Or DFF nights on the book study, we could be having chicken nuggets, and you could be having these long. Uh, uh, Sushi, veggie sticks. Crunchy, these long, crunchy, uh, uh, hoagie-looking things. Yeah. That are that are full of air and rice. Scene. <laughs> I mean, you guys kind of seem like you're at a dead end here. Long, crunchy, hoagie-looking things. We're opening the long, crunchy, hoagie-looking things restaurant tomorrow. I, I honestly think import- you guys. I think you guys peaked with the planets and moons thing. Yeah, that, that it, it, this 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 back and forth somehow got you to that point, and I'm really glad it did. That was that was good. It's all for it's it's always good when we come up with the visual aids, isn't it? So the calendar and the planets and the moons. I think that's the moral of the story. <laughs> yep. Okay, Sean, say your happy thing as the curtains close. I really love my substitutes. <laughs> and scene. <laughs> I'm just like told you. <laughs> okay, uh, we're gonna go back to the round one version here uh, in a out. second, where one of you starts a game and you guys go back and forth changing the game. You guys aren't gonna do the scenario thing anymore because I think that stresses you guys out. <laughs> so Sean, um, maybe... it's gonna be your turn. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Maybe, maybe like what? once every every. Like, I think it's unique and cool. But maybe not a lot yeah. each time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe. Okay, so you guys are going to go back and forth, trading hands, making a game to gamify this change that I'm going to come up with in a second. Sean, you're going to start us out because okay. Sam will start us out last time. Um, you're going to need to gamify changing a diaper. No, 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 oh! no, no, no. no. That's not good. <laughs> <laughs> Throw it! Throw it into the chest! You're distorting your microphone so much. <laughs> oh, I'm done! <laughs> okay. So, this new change, Sean, you're gonna come with the gamified approach to uh-huh. introducing a new friend to your social circle. Hmm. And that friend is me, I guess. <laughs> this is a very different friend. Very, very different from any other friend you've ever had. But in this scenario, they are open to trying fun things that your current friends enjoy. Okay. So if you imagine our social circle like an ocean, and you're bringing this new friend in in a submarine, and he wants to see all of the different things about this friend group, or he doesn't, but here's what happens. Our social circles are like different settings. One social circle is a beautiful coral reef in the 
freshwater uh, rapids. Another one is a flowing river that goes through mainland. Uh, another one is uh, the deep ocean where you can see marine creatures and big scary things. That actually, that's the bullies at school. I don't think we wanted to introduce them, um, but we got these different. In- <laughs> oh, sorry, we got that these- was funny to me. Oh, thanks. Oh, wait, those, are the uh, those are the bullies. We don't want to. <laughs> okay. So we've got these different social situations, and your friend is in a submarine, and that submarine is your friend your friendship with him and that's where you check up on him friendship. that's where you're like hey hey what did you think about that last interaction and you can uh take as much time in the submarine as you want but the objective of the game is to go around to these different locations and visit these scenarios with him and the submarine is kind of like your base it's it's like a and it's like a big mobile home kind of thing so it's exploration oriented and it's it's loose uh it it's looking for things that uh are fun for both of you and hopefully you and that friend in the submarine are going to be able to go benefit that other location somehow and you can create kind of like a mutual uh understanding of how to follow christ and bring others into his kingdom um uh change go to samuel (laughs) So you're trying to start a gang here, and no change. Go back to Sean. What? Go back to Sean. We're going back to Sean. There's no gang. She's There's been no talking gang. for so long. <laughs> I just heard my echo. <laughs> yeah. So there, uh, the point system is tracked by a nice little display in your. I summary. may as well interject here. I don't have a problem with. I don't have a problem with sharing religion to friends, but that shouldn't be the goal of their friendship. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, but yeah, let's let's hand it off to Samuel. Up in the blanket. It's that, so cute. Aw. That that was a Christian niche joke. Uh, it was. Yeah, 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 I took it as a joke. I took it as a joke, and I took it as a hint that you want me to pass it on to Samuel. So oh, we're passing it on yeah, to Samuel. Yeah, yeah. You're in the submarine. You can change what you want, Samuel. But don't change anything too uh, drastically. So we're always looking for new places, but we've got a few of our favorite locations as well. There's the coral reef where our um, coworkers hang out. Uh, I kind of have inside jokes with my friends about what I do and don't like about my coworkers. Coral workers. And can I can I just can I just have a? I I think I had a revelation. I don't know if you meant this or not, but. Is that the surface level, friends? Oh! Oh! You got points for that. <laughs> Thank you. Nice. <clears throat> and uh, but I, I'll spend kind of the easy time with this new person. I say, but this isn't where I really want to be. And I'll take them around to the more fun waters where my friends kind of swim around freely and get outside of the submarine Dolphins. and do some looking at looking at stuff it's where the sun comes through pretty clear there's more space for swimming um and as and we uh we make kind of more appropriate but um open like comfortable jokes and conversation and stuff and we're looking at the fish that we like it's a very um, easy place to find the dolphins and but then uh now and then if if the new friend is feeling up to it He'll follow us to the deeper areas where we'll do the deep sea diving and we'll go into deeper, um, we'll go into more of our personal conversations about like, I really did or didn't like this experience that one day we're sharing more um, life long, longer, deeper inside jokes and stuff. Um and the friend will sometimes hang back in the submarine and I'll check in on him and make sure that he's still comfortable with with it. And he'll say, yeah, yeah, that's good. Or if he says not, I tell my friends, okay, let's get back in the submarine. We're going to go back to um, the dolphin area or we're going back to the beach and everybody's going to go home. But that's how, that's how we kind of try it out. Eventually he might want to get out and swim around in the deep end of the pool a little bit, uh, uh, ocean. A little bit, <laughs> um, but 
sometimes you'll see a shark or something and it'll swim up to the submarine and he'll say, I think that was enough for today. And <laughs> we'll go back and he'll say, actually, I want to hang out in the coral reef today. And if he spends too much time in the coral reef and he hits it off with the <laughs> other people, it's okay. He doesn't actually have to be your friend. He could be one of those surface level friendships and it's good that you didn't spend too much time trying to make it work. But the ocean, the ocean is a place where you got to be careful and know where you're swimming when it comes to friendship and it comes to getting out of the submarine. That fart did not go over my microphone, did it? <laughs> no, it did. <laughs> uh, all right, back to Sean. What, uh, what, what might you want to add or take away? Change. John. So there's a screen in the submarine in the living room uh, where you can look at the TV and hang out and stuff with your friends while you're transporting that uh, you can record whatever you want on it. But it has categories like I really liked this thing about this particular thing. And you can categorize things how you want if you have an emotional conversation with uh, with the whole group uh out in the ocean in the deep end one thing you and your friend can do in the submarine later after you're done with that interaction is go look in the catalog and, and be like okay let's let's find the category or make the category and then say uh okay well i felt a little threatened when this happened or i felt actually pretty encouraged when this guy said this about me uh i really liked participating in this kind of joke uh, and stuff like that. And it also, you can catalog stuff like experiences that you do, activities. Uh, this often goes into the surface level area where uh, you're going axe throwing or paintballing or skeet shooting or uh, deer hunting. Why are all of these about guns? This um, is all very violent. Yeah, what I mean... And who's doing those any are of that in the I ocean? Like to go uh, that's a good. We have ocean shotguns, but those are the things ocean I like beer? to do with friends. Mm -hmm. But you can catalog uh, activities that you do with friends, uh, experiences that you have with friends emotionally, mentally, um, or if you feel like, hey, we just ran a race, and I'm not fit enough to do that, so I think I'm gonna hang back next time. The catalog will help you if you are encountering something that's like, eh, I'm not sure about this. I don't know if I want to do this. You can look back at the catalog and be like, okay, well, this experience is kind of similar to this new one, what it's going to be. So how did... <laughs> that was echoey. I thought that was a marble falling. <laughs> oh, that's not a good image. Um, anyway. It was a marble falling. <laughs> let's, just, let's just say there was a marble falling. Anyway, this catalog can help you visualize your situation in the submarine. It's a little bit like your submarine's radar. Like, uh, I, okay, so we're approaching a depth level of so-and-so and such and such, and usually stuff like this happens here. Um, that's not always the case. You can find unexpected stuff. Uh, but it can help put a rhyme and reason to uh, what you think is happening it can help you feel more secure and if you can get the other friends in on it if your friend is comfortable that can help him uh feel more loved in the friend group and more cared for uh because the friends are ready to help him uh overcome certain things hurdles or if they're willing to uh let him in on inside jokes uh that can be quite helpful too Okay. <clears throat> Radar. Change. Samuel. Special um, special quests. Sometimes me and my friends, we like to go on special quests. Whether it's in the surface area, the coral reef, or if we're in the dolphin fun area, there are a lot of fun quests. They're not super special there, but they're little bonuses we can unlock. They're games we can play with dolphins and stuff. And we'll get special points. But the points are doubled if you do it with the new friend. So the new friend is going on one of these quests with you. It's a bigger point if you can, if you get, uh, if you win, uh, you win two of them. 
And then <laughs> when you go to the deep area, sometimes you'll discover something like a sunken, there's a sunken ship area we like to go to and look for things. And sometimes we'll be there and there'll be something there that wasn't there before. It's like, oh, someone else who was in this area left something. And you'll look at it and you'll collect it and you'll say, it'll show you what, that you earned something from it. And uh, it's it's more difficult to take your friend, your new friend with you on these quests, but there's more to unlock when he's there. And the points Ooh. will be doubled if you can get him out there to get them with you. So um, that would be like, there's also shark shark wrestling. These aren't, um, so like that that was the special quests. So we've covered the special quests. Then there's the normal quests, the games that you usually play. Like I talked about swimming with the dolphins. I talked about um, uh, swimming in the deeper areas and having deeper conversations. There's also... Um, fighting things in the deeper areas like the angler fish kind of avoiding the light it's uh and uh wrestling wrestling bully sharks and uh there's even a big octopus deep down in there that you've got to um he'll sometimes he, he usually be holding on to something that you're trying to get from him but if you're not careful you and all your friends will get eaten is this like bringing up personal drama and stuff or mm -hmm. You can find clues deep in your past, and sometimes your friend, your new friend, can help you realize things that you hadn't otherwise realized, and that makes it extra new because this is a new phase of your life, and you're finding a link from your past to understand the present better. And so you're, you'll be just having these casual conversations in the deep water that you always have with your friends, and your new person will be like, wait, but I had an experience similar to that. And it was actually good for me in this way. And we're like, well, none of that, that, that wasn't good. And they say, yeah, but the thing that was good was this. And we're like, I didn't realize that. There was that other thing. And yeah, and that'll help you. <laughs> Sean, Sean, you just had a very Ian, you had a very Ian moment. You said, yeah. And then your eyes rolled into the back of your head and you started drinking. <laughs> yeah. Should I pass it on to Sean, or should we call it there? In the in the coral reef, there are crabs and stuff. Just thought I'd mention that. Yeah, there's like the little you got... likes complaining about Mister Krabs. Yeah, everybody everybody's got yeah, challenges work. everywhere that they are. Um, I mean, you there will everyone, be everyone at the surface level likes complaining about the boss and about corporate. Yeah, Mister mm -hmm. Krab yeah. from SpongeBob, who's yeah the analogy of capitalism very 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 <laughs> caricature of money i like me money work overtime and don't get paid i like selling these burgers after we're closed mm -hmm. <laughs> if it means nice. it's a customer <laughs> all right we've lost traction does that mean that we're coming to a close on that one i think i think i want to add something uh i okay. think it would be interesting if the octopus was the deeper meaning of life because he's like, hmm. he's like the big scary guy that could kill you. Um, so like bringing in philosophy or religion or something like well, that. Well, the deep waters do go more the philosophy and religion areas. That's why you don't always have your friend out there with you, your new friend out there with you because. Yeah, or like if he's used to a different area of the deep end, the deep part of the waters. If if he's not accustomed to this part, it could be really scary. Mm -hmm. Um. Mm -hmm. I also think it would be a really cool mechanic if eventually uh, that friend can get, I don't want to say upgraded because it's never quite that simple, but if he can become more of an integral part of the friend group and then you can add more people and if you can turn it into, like you can have three or four people in the submarine, um, if because... Often in social situations, multiple people get brought in at the same time, and it can mm -hmm. be uh, it can be complicated to just do one person at a time. Uh, I also think it would be cool to have like a vital sign kind of screen for each player in the submarine, uh, where you can kind of track what their state is. Um, but you have to update it every now and then because if you don't update it, uh, you don't have accurate information and you can't uh, help. It's like them checking in on them. Integrate into the friend group, yeah. 
Or it's like they update it when they want to, and you can request an update, but mm -hmm. it doesn't always happen. That's all I thought of. Yeah, I like that we have a home base inside the friendship where you can look at the screen and kind of see the map and see log of yeah. how the friend's doing and how close he is to being uh, an inner circle friend, like a friend who can always go on these ship rides with you and who who you can yeah. always expect will be swimming in the deep end with you guys and stuff. I mean, even the friends you've had for a long time won't always feel like doing stuff, but if he goes on the trips, he'll be doing all the same stuff. So he'll be graduated mm -hmm. completely as a friend. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I really like... Sean, I... I it was really... By the way, I'm, I'm wrapping this one up. Mm -hmm. This uh, friends one. Uh, really good job just starting out with an analogy of the ocean. Um, I was thinking of start... something... I was thinking of something similar to the planets, and I was like, I don't want to recycle the planets one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, well, the the, but that was really good expansive. having a confident start, and that really helped having the know, first one I've had. <laughs> the first time <laughs> you've ever been confident on this entire podcast. Uh huh. Um, okay, so what about that time that he really said good... that you can't just eat vegetables? That that was confident and wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and he learned. He he learned from that mistake. Well, I still think it's better to have a balanced diet. I mean, you can live you off can, of vegetables. You can have a balanced vegetable diet. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Well, there's also the there's also the truth that there's a lot more to vegetables than vegetables. Yeah, like there are dumb people yeah, too. There's potatoes. <laughs> No, 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 Sean. No. Like when you, when you think of vegetables, you people. probably when you think of vegetables, you probably think of celery and broccoli, carrots, maybe chickpeas, stuff like that. But there's so much more. There's like there's potatoes. You forget the potatoes are in technically in that category. There's um avocado, there's chia seeds. I think an avocado beans. is a fruit. I know, yes, the fruits and vegetables veg category. Okay. All right. You you just you just don't understand. Yeah. Yeah. But, but you will. Was, there's, you there's, will. There's, pumpkin. I was making a dumb poke into that one. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, like but, but when when you're someone when you're someone who needs to avoid the, yes carnivorous the proteins foods. in yeah when there's something in the proteins of meat that makes you sick or if you're a very conscious person about that stuff and you personally feel guilty or sad when you eat meat and that's just something bad for your mental health and you need to. Mm -hmm. Have a different diet. Another, uh, I never fine. was. <laughs> I was never saying that those are not good reasons. And it's yeah, I know, I know. Yeah, I think another yeah. misconception is sometimes people think that vegetarian means avoiding protein, but that's not at all. No, that's, that's not that's, at that's, all um, what it means because yeah. you can get protein from plants, and if you mm -hmm. if you if you mean animal when you say protein. That's not true either. Exactly. Yeah, that doesn't make sense. Also, when you're eating animal, you're not just eating protein, you know? Mm -hmm. There's uh, okay. lipids and stuff like that. Yeah. Anyway, let's let's keep going here. Those are some good games. Uh, what do you guys? What do you guys think overall of how I approached this today? Do you think that we through those different rounds? We had four or five. I think we have five rounds. We had that one at the beginning, and then the three. The three conversational ones, and then that last game there. Um, do you think that we pretty well touched on the topic of change? Uh, you guys can take turns talking about that. Who wants to go first? Just I, talking about how you personally feel like we might have touched on today. I feel like we learned a lot about the elements of approaching change through that first game. Uh, when we were talking about going to college. Good job again, Sean, coming up with a specific thing. Oh, uh, thanks. To, I've never been to, change, to college. To change to. Because you just used what you're thinking about, I think, like the next change in your life. Um, uh -huh. uh, we didn't dive very deep outside of that, but I think that there are other changes that are harder to think about. Like we had trouble playing some of these games, and I'd say we... Well, I'm I'm not. The I judge, think it was pretty. I think that we had a very difficult. Yeah, we had a very difficult time touching on change outside of just 
I'm changing something, but it's good that we got those elements. I think when it comes to things like big, big changes, uh, which every change is big, but like somebody who was in your life isn't in your life anymore. That's a very difficult change. And it, it, it doesn't even mm-hmm. seem very appropriate to make a game out of that, but having right. a way of thinking about it, I think is important. And so I didn't want to just go like end this episode without having said, uh, with saying that we've covered every kind of change. Um, mm-hmm. Seasons change. Even if, that, even if all we did about the moving one was that it's really hard to talk about. If all that I liked about fall is the ways that it's like summer, I'd be missing all the things about fall that are good. Like, I like fall because it's fall. Um, I sometimes have a hard time transitioning into the colder, darker season when I like, I want the good things about fall, but I don't want the darkness and stuff. So I have to kind of use some things from summer that are like fall to make it better. Um, Mm. But then for the things that are different, I try to keep them different. I'm just like, this is distinct. This is different, Uh, a different season. So I think yeah. I think with that first game, we pretty well set a foundation for how we wanted to approach change. I think so. Right. And I liked I liked the the scenarios. Things. Yeah, I liked the role play, and I liked the um, change, a uh, change the change game being starting here. Yeah, yeah. I I will say for anyone who is in improv, that was probably painful for you guys because I didn't yell change quite as often <laughs> as you would in an actual improv class, but none of us have done an improv class. None of us are suited for this. I just thought it might mm-hmm. be a little fun to occasionally sprinkle it in there. Um, it definitely wasn't as... Yes, Samuel? None of us are suited for this. We aren't properly trained, maybe, I should say. <laughs> Sean, you're very fish-eyed face. Look at this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, we... It wasn't full on the change game, but I thought it would be a fun idea to sprinkle that in because the concept, the topic is change. And it was time. Um, Sean, how do you feel? How do you feel at the end I of this? Think, I don't remember all of the stuff that we specifically did, but it touched on some uh, difficult stuff for me. I think the proudest part about it was the submarine game uh, because I feel like I don't like where i am socially at the moment i feel like i need more regular friends and i think viewing it this way might help me find some or follow up with some yeah Uh, i think one of the scariest things about making a new friend is i'm not ready for someone to know all the stuff i'm dealing with i'm not ready to have someone else to argue about philosophy and religion i'm not ready for all that but it is it's good to think yeah i'll it's okay to start out with a surface level friend. Maybe eventually they'll become a deep friend, but don't let an opportunity of a friend slip by because you're scared of the deep stuff. Yeah. There are some people that you encounter that just are the sharks to you or look mm. like sharks. And that can be scary. Um, I mean, and then when you detect patterns, you're like, that looks like a shark. Oh, wait a second. That was a dolphin. Hmm. Uh-huh. We can let them in the yeah. submarine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, maybe the analogy <laughs> falls apart there. But. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, I felt that it was a useful analogy to look at, to kind of view things through. It kind of, the, the planets and submarine thing kind of, maybe I am a visual learner because those kind of helped me in some way or another kind of approach things kind of i feel like some of that kind of hurt uh the one about moving <laughs> was really rough to get i was through. crying at the end of that one yeah <laughs> yeah were you actually crying well i'm a good he was fogging I was like, i'm a good actor but i mean it was pretty yeah. cheesy fake crying but there were real tears there were yeah, it's kind of dry in here. Oh, okay. Well, I I, I did put <laughs> I put myself in an emotional place to do the scene. Uh-huh. Yeah, he was thinking about what if this was me leaving. I think. Yeah. Because he brought up art crawl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, but yeah, you think that thinking about things 
in school like the solar system and thinking about friends as the ocean analogy you think that might help you in application in real life i think so if i can remember them that's one of the main <laughs> problems of gamification for me is i'm like this is a great game what was that game <laughs> yeah i Which is why the gamification journal it. might be helpful yeah that's true that was, was definitely one of the more emotional ones to film for me <laughs> mm -hmm. i like yeah, that I, I like i like I, being raw but uh vulnerable i like i like i like it when there's a deeper meaning to it no but i personally <laughs> whenever i host i don't judge or grade the games well when it's Here's Samuel, he presents a game. Here's Sean, he presents a game. Round two, here's Samuel. You know, I want it to be more conversational. I want it to be more game-like. Mm. I, 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 I like it this way. It's okay to fall back on that pattern, but whenever I host, I try to bring something new to the table to keep it fresh and to keep it mm. engaging, to keep the audience have fun listening and to have us have fun listening. And, yeah. um, I, you know, it just it helps me out. It helps me feel like a better judge on things um if you guys are ready for the scores i can bring them i felt like a better um, please let samuel today. win <laughs> yeah what do you say sam sean please let samuel win oh <laughs> well okay the the final scores um i don't have a good breakdown because i wasn't making good notes when i was giving scores uh, but the the high points for sean you had a good setting for the school one um you had a good analogy with the planets and the moons and i don't remember what the last the ocean he came up with the ocean yeah the ocean he came you up got, with the ocean. you got a lot of points with that one too. oh for uh yeah. new friends yeah. samuel new yeah samuel you did a good job changing the point system in the professor mm -hmm. game um you made good points with the friendship one and you the different friend groups thing with the shallow or reef the deeper all that yeah, stuff that, that was, was pretty really good. good um those are the times that you guys got five points i was doing a scale of one to five but with all of the one to threes on top of those sean ended up with 24 points and samuel ended up with 29 Ooh. points Yay! So samuel won this episode overall i think giving a little bit better input um every time there was a change i feel like he made a stronger change for the better Whereas Sean kind of yeah. every once in a while struggled with that. <laughs> Sean um, was this time Sean was a good synonyms. <laughs> I yeah. I'm poor. I don't have money. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yeah, this this I think it's interesting. This episode Sean was a good insider and and Samuel was a good changer. Um, and that lines up with today's topic of change. So he won. So that was different. Mm -hmm. So yeah. <laughs> Look forward to Samuel mm -hmm. hosting the next episode. Thank you guys for watching and listening. I hope that something that we said might have struck something in you and went, oh, maybe I'll use that in my life. Because that's our hope. It, as well as entertaining you for a good hour, 45 minutes to an hour. Another goal is to maybe give you some long lasting application. But if you just were entertained this episode, that's fine. I hope we uh, were a good uh, a company to you while you were driving slash doing the dishes yes. slash painting yes. slash driving off the road laughing. <laughs> Don't do that, please. Um, but do pull over and subscribe to our podcast. <laughs> follow our podcast. Uh, follow us on Spotify. That's where we're trying to grow our audience the most. Um, but if you're watching on YouTube or listening to Apple Podcasts, wherever you're listening, we do appreciate it. Make sure to follow Samuel, Moser Meadows Records, most places, but it's also Samuel Claus Tuner on Instagram. Follow Sean, Tiny 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 Ten, ten Tiny Potatoes, or variations of that in places. Um, he's pretty much just prominent on YouTube, so just go subscribe to him on YouTube for now. Yeah. And then follow me, Puzzle MTM, everywhere. If you learn how to spell it one place, that's how you spell it everywhere else. Literally, everywhere else. Discord he got even. To claim the, he got to claim the uh, the name. That is my moniker. That is my moniker, uh -huh. Puzzle MTM. And uh, we hope you come back in the future, catch up on some previous episodes, and uh, that's it. This is the end of the episode. Uh, and as we always say at the end of these episodes, game... And as we always say at the end of the episodes, game, game over. over.